I did. Good morning, you guys. Welcome to the Fearless Morning Show. Um, my mom's parking the car right now, so we are waiting. I hope you guys are having a good morning. Everyone's doing okay. It is the third day of school. It's Friday. Thank goodness, because... It's Friday. Are you happy for Friday? Oh yeah, cause I'm I'm like the weekend. So well, how's Friday. the first? How has been the first? Like how has been your first? Day how of school? has been? How has been <laughs> your first three days of school? Uh, I, well, I don't know today, but the, the past two days, the first day I got lost like six times, even though I only have four classes. That you got day. lost six times with four classes. Yes. That means I got lost at the beginning and end of oh. a couple of classes. Just, you in, know. Yeah, in general. Oh, okay. I was just wondering. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah. And um, yesterday, yesterday was pretty cool. It was a good day. I came home and I got tired, so. Uh, <laughs> Are you upside down? <laughs> Because my holder is upside down, and I was like, "Well, maybe if I just flip the phone, will I have to just flip the holder?" Don't. Hey, hey, hey! I got this. I got this. Okay. All right, I got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's so loud. Rosie Rosie got Friday. You she got you twisted over there, JoJo. <laughs> yeah. This. This. Oh, is that the lady from? Yeah. Okay. It's a. It's a lot. Good morning, guys. Rosie started the morning show. My name is Yamicha Jojo Water, the only live past crazy specials. So what better place to be than here with me? Rosie was saying it was the third day of school, and she is glad about it. It's the end of the week, and she tired already. Oh. <laughs> Rosie, Good you are morning, too everybody. young to be tired. Too young to be tired. Can I just say that, baby? Look. <laughs> she telling me I can't say it or she gonna be tired. Rosie like who? Shoot. Me? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, man. All right, guys. Well, good morning and welcome to the show where our quote this morning. I had to pull this quote. Um, I saw it on um May Taylor's page. And I was like, oh, yes, this is very much important. Since we having true confessions and conversations over here, I thought that this was a great quote because it ties in with a lot of the things that we talk about on the show that are also attached to fear. But the quote is this, or the statement is this, if you never heal from what hurt you, you will bleed on people who didn't cut you. Wasn't that what I said yesterday? Good, if good morning, morning. you never heal from what hurt you, you'll bleed on people who didn't cut you. Mm, Y'all, that's man. a silent mic drop right there. You see, this, this uh, imagine that it's a mic Boop, dropped, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's a silent mic drop right there. There's often times that people get into situations and circumstances. And you, yeah, you said it yesterday, too bringing all that hurt with you from those past relationships over to your current, your present, whatever it may be, just bringing all of that baggage along with you when you can mm -hmm. just unpack it. How many, and leave times, it alone. how many times have you gone on a trip? You would, we would literally go on trips. Jojo and I were in Texas together what, uh, not too long ago. Do you guys not know it took me some time to unpack my bag when I got back because I knew I had to go back out. I was like, why am I going to unpack this bag? Well, some of us do that in life. We don't unpack the baggage that we brought with us. We just keep bringing it around from trip to trip. Stuff you don't even need. That's why you have all that stuff, <laughs> right? End up at the airport getting charged extra because your bag over 50 pounds. That's all I'm saying. Anywho, y'all, if you never heal from what hurt you, you'll bleed on people that didn't cut you. That's and that's not fair. Yes, it's not. It is not. So what I'm going to share with you this morning, for our, I'm going to leave that one alone because that's a good one all by itself. Um, yes, the, that's the, perfect. <laughs> the um, financial confession and conversation this morning, guys, we're talking about five 
things that's keeping you from getting better results in your finances. Good morning, Miss Diane. Thank you for joining us. Um, five things keeping you from getting better results in your finances. I just want to say, um, especially for those of you who may watch the replay, guys, the, the class last night was amazing. For those of you who got in the investing blueprint class last night, it was amazing. And we will I missed it out next week. But you got time to get in. Anyone else who's interested, you have time to get in. It was amazing. Um, I'm, that's all I'm going to say about that. But let's get to those five things keeping you from getting better results in your finances. And thing number one, our item number one, our result number one, Did we lose you, Lynn? Okay. Hopefully she'll come. Okay, there she go. Yeah, you know, I, I, I know everybody in my contact list knows that the Fearless Morning Show is at 7. They forget, man. It's Friday. They forgot. <laughs> everybody know that. Okay. And I'm going to let that one go. <laughs> five reasons, right? Five reasons or five things keeping you from getting better results in your finances. First one is the inability to keep up. There's an inability to keep up with all the information, your overwhelm, your stress about all these different things that are happening in your finances. And you're unable to keep up because you were trying to do what? Live your life, right? Live somebody else's life with your paycheck. That's really what happened. <laughs> Trying to live. Boy, somebody you broke else's a life. big toe right there. Right? What? You're so, <laughs> you're so crazy. You sound like, you know, back in the day when you used to sit around and listen to your mom and she's in the friend with the older ladies in the room. <laughs> yeah. And they all had those little colloquialism, those little yeah. things that they say. You just yeah. took me back for a second. You just took me back. But anyway, it's the inability to keep up guys because you're trying to do things that you are not ready to do in this moment when all it takes is just a few tweaks and turns here and a couple of adjustments and then you'll be able to make some differences in your financial situations um, but we we try not to uh, look at that because we don't want to know the truth. <laughs> Just like one of my clients shared the other day. She said she didn't want to know the truth about what was going on in her finances. And as a result of that, you are now stressed. You are now overwhelmed with the process. You will continue to live paycheck to paycheck because you do not have an understanding of what it is or those things that you need to be doing to pull out of this. So that inability to keep up it's having you doing like, uh, remember the movie Nemo? And the famous line from Nemo was just keep swimming. That's all you can do is just keep swimming because things keep happening. Jojo, your facial, uh, 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 <laughs> your, <laughs> your facial expressions kill me. I know when something is going on. That girl you. is missing the whole bottom half of her, her clothes. Like, why her mama let her leave the house like that? Please carry on, Lynn. Y'all don't pay my face. I'm going I'm going to work on my facial expression. My bad. Okay, she was direct. Right. She got out directly in front of me. I'm sorry. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, well, girl, that's high school these days. Hopefully the administration in that school will send her home because I know that there are some rules and regulations Woo. in that code of conduct, right? In, re yes, in regards to the way that you should be dressed. See, here we go. We sound like those old ladies again. Anywho, yeah. <laughs> <Way. laughs> don't say it, Jojo, don't say it. Number two, <laughs> number two is a lack of understanding. You have a lack of understanding as far as money is concerned. And I'm not talking about just the basics of understanding your money, but there are some rules out here to this money game that many of us are missing. And it's not that we're missing them because we're dumb or we're unintelligent. We're missing them because no one has ever taught us. No one has ever had that courageous conversation with us about our money. And many of us won't have these conversations because we, because we allow pride to get in the way. 
because we don't want anyone to really know, right, what's going on behind the curtain. See, we try to be like, what's his name in Wizard of Oz? Was that Richard Pryor in Wizard of Oz? In the Wiz. He was in the Wiz, yeah. right? He was behind the curtain throwing all the lights in the flash. See, that's what we do. We throw all the lights in the flash. But if you really go back there and pull the curtain over, you will see the real thing, right? And that's the challenge for some of us in our finances. We have a lack of understanding into the rules of money. We don't know how to make our money, keep our money, and grow our money. All we know is what's being told to us on the commercials. See, those commercials, they have an end game. And their end game is to release you from your money. Their end game is to get in your wallet, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Their end game, guys, is to, to, to build their, they want to make, keep, and grow their money, right? That's the end game that they're positioning us with. So what we have to now recognize, guys, is to get an understanding of what all of these things are and why they're positioning it, positioning it this way. Have you ever, and I know this is me, have you ever just been sitting there, you know, watching television and all of a sudden that commercial comes on, you weren't even thinking about chicken or you were not even thinking about, you know, whatever it is. Or even those guys who do the infomercials with the knives, He'd come on and he'll start talking about the knife. You weren't thinking about buying a knife. But he'll the infomercial queen that over knife. here. Boy, this knife will cut and slice up everything. It'll even cut up a piece of wood. It'll cut through a nail. And you'll be like, oh, we, I need one of those knives, right? <laughs> you weren't even thinking about a knife. But that's the way, guys, we have to have a better understanding of our finances and that lack of understanding is killing us it's causing us to be consumers as mm -hmm. opposed to producers see the producers are always on the winning side mm -hmm. did you hear that did you catch that so what are you out there producing is what i'm asking you today as opposed to consuming see we got to have a better understanding a lack of understanding in this money game is what's keeping us from getting better results in our finances. The number three thing that I want to share with you this morning, guys, a lot of us, we are out here, um, the blind leading the blind, basically, is what we're saying. We're out here flying blind, and we have no clear strategy. We have no direction. We have no plan when it comes to our money. We know we want to save, right? We know we want to invest. We know we want to retire. And we say we're going to do these things, but we don't have a clear plan or, or a clear strategy as to how we're going to get from point A to point B. We just say we want to do it and think we're going to get there. Dare I say, do you think, and Rosie's in what, ninth grade. Rosie said, I'm going to graduate as valedictorian of ABC High School. Do you think Rosie is going to get there without having a clear plan or strategy? Because dare I say, all of those kids who are at the top of their game in that school, you better know they have a strategy. You better know they're hanging out with their friends and knowing what AP classes they're taking and what GPAs they have. See, they have a strategy and a plan because they want to be number one. They want to be valedictorian, right? So you, the same thing happens, guys, with us in our money, in our finances, in your saving, in your investing, in your retirement planning. See, you need a strategy and you need a plan. But the reason that we're not getting the results that we want, guys, is because we don't have a clear strategy. We don't have an investing blueprint to figure out what it is we, we want to invest in. We don't have a budget to even know how much money we have coming in and going out. We don't even know our net worth, y'all. The scary word. And I was listening, yes, I was listening to, uh, man, I cannot remember who I was listening to, but this was the thing that he shared. He said, and you said, that's a scary word. He said, this is also scary, especially in the black community, since we're going to be real here for a moment. Said, mm -hmm. tell a black person to have a Cadillac to go and park that Cadillac on land that they own. Mm. Stepped on some toes all the way right and i said wow 
we have, as a community, we've gotten this thing all twisted. And that's one of the reasons that we don't have better results in our finances. And guys, like I said earlier, this is not something that we should be ashamed of, right? If, <laughs> if and only if we start to educate ourselves and start to do <clears throat> things differently. See, if you continue to do the same things, then of course you're going to get the same result and you'll continue to be in those same situations. That's right. The last thing, guys, that I, I, I have two more. Number four, the number four. So number one was the inability to keep up because we're stressed and overwhelmed in our financial situations because we're trying to live somebody else's life on our paycheck. The number two reason is we have a lack of understanding. We don't understand how to play this money game. We don't know the rules of the money game because somebody else wrote the game, wrote the money, the rules, right? You know who wrote the rules? All those politicians that you did not go out and vote for. But that's a different video. Okay. Number three. Why? Why? Is that a stress? You need me to move over? Well, no, no. I want to back in it because I know it's going to be a mess getting Tell out of and, uh, and you want to back in? <laughs> okay. All right. We had, we had. Real life. Sorry about that. It's okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning, y'all. So you still in somebody's parking space, apparently, is what I'm well, hearing. Well, no, no, no. A parent, a parent just want to back in instead of but pull, up. pull, you know, but traffic. These kids are like freaking speed demons. Yes, they and are. Yes. I almost didn't let Rosie cross the parking lot yesterday. Anyway, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining. Carry on, then. Yes, My bad. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's all right. I'm just making sure everything's okay because I don't know if I need to call 911. I can't do nothing <laughs> from here, but I can call 911 if needed. All right. So, getting back to the five things that's keeping you from getting better results. Let me do a quick re recap again. Number one is your inability to keep up because we're trying to live somebody else's life on that paycheck instead of trying to figure out what is what matters most to us, right? Mm -hmm. And prioritizing those things for us and focusing in on that one goal, we try to accomplish and do everything else. Number two, there's a lack of understanding. We don't know the rules to the money game. And we need to educate ourselves and get in the communities that are going to help us to expand our knowledge base. See, guys, we are some of the most brilliant individuals on this planet, yet we do some of the dumbest stuff. That's all I'm going to say about that. Number three, we're flying blind without a clear strategy. We don't have a strategy for our money. All we know is the, the paycheck is hitting today. It's Friday. Just got paid, right? Okay, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> we don't have a clear strategy of what it is that we need to be doing in our money, yet alone talking about looking at my money on a regular basis, other than when that making sure the direct deposit goes in on Friday or the first and the 15th or however you get paid, right? And then, guys, the, the number four, there, you, don't, you have a lack of patience. You'll start something, right? You'll start on the journey to tracking your expenses or you'll start, right, on the journey to budgeting, but you won't be consistent. You'll say, oh, I tried this for 30 days and it didn't work. How long did it take you to amass those 20, 30, 40, 60, 100, $250,000 worth of debt. Did you do that in 30 days? Now, some people may have, <laughs> right? However, for the average individual, that didn't happen overnight. So we must understand that because it did not occur overnight, then the, it will not recorrect re itself overnight. So we have to recognize and understand, guys, that we must be patient. And when we're not patient, that lack of patience is not allowing us to generate the results that we want. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. <laughs> and then number five, guys, the number five reason that you're not getting better results in your finances is you won't just do it. Yeah, I'm borrowing for Nike. Just do it. Just focus on your finances. Just 
set up a budget, just know your net worth, just do the work. And see, that's it. I said a four letter word, I cussed you out. I said, do the what work. Oftentimes if we see something and it's a little bit of work, we say, uh, uh, no, that's not for me. That's not for me. And you know, and I, and I understand that mentality oftentimes, and I'm not even going to share that story because my husband would be like, why did you tell them that on, on Facebook Live? So I'm not going to share that story. I'm going to keep it to my Don't head. have Robbie look, come looking for me now. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, guys, the question I want to ask you this morning are the questions that you should be asking yourself. The questions you should be asking your, yourself is what result do you want? from your finances? What results do you want from your saving? What results do you want from your investing? What results do you want for your life? That's the first and foremost, because if you don't know what it is that you want and why you want it, chances are you won't get it. And we talked about it earlier, Rosie, going out to be valedictorian. Yeah, Rosie, I already spoke that into existence. So, baby, you got to work hard. It's freshman year. Get that started now, <laughs> right? It's freshman year, okay? There's a plan that must be in place in order to get to that space. And another problem, guys, I know I said I was only going to give five reasons, but let me throw in a bonus, <laughs> The number six reason, guys, is we don't stretch far enough. We don't stretch far enough when it comes to setting our goals, right? And then when we, when, then when we don't make it, then we have the audacity to sit around and be disgusted because we were not consistent in the process. All right, y'all? <laughs> that's why I'm Lynn Dem is America's number one financial rebound coach because I don't mind telling you the truth that you don't want to hear okay I don't mind having that courageous conversation with you and I don't mind being that you know back in the day everybody had that mean teacher right back in the day you had that one mean teacher but it turns out that one mean teacher is the person that most often you're most thankful for. You're most thankful for because they were the ones that had all of the things that they, that they required you to put in place so you can get to your next. And I want to be that, I want to be that person to help you get to your next. I don't want to be the mean person, but I will be the real person. I'll be the person that has that tough conversation with you when it talks, when it comes to your finances. Do you see what Jamila said? Good morning, Jamila. She said, write down the amounts of money you want to save and what amount you want to earn. Put it up where you see it and show your plan. Keep taking steps towards your money dreams. That's that's right. Yep. Absolutely. You got to do it if you want things to change. If you want to stay the same, if you want to continue to be broke, busted, and disgusted, if you want to continue to be stressed and overwhelmed, if you want to continue to not be able to leave generational wealth behind, if you don't want to leave a true financial legacy, then that's okay. Then do you. <laughs> but I'm talking to the people who are committed to making a change. I'm, I'm talking to the people who don't want to live this paycheck to paycheck lifestyle. I'm talking to the people who don't want to be overwhelmed in their financial situation, having to hang up the phone because the bill collectors is calling. And y'all, I saw the funniest Facebook post. One of my girls, <laughs> she posted the funniest thing. She said the bill co collector called her the other day and said that her bill was a year old. She said, tell him, tell him I said happy birthday. <laughs> I said, well, girl, you know you crazy. But anyway, guys, even though we laugh, right? <laughs> We laugh at that situation. That's not a situation you want to get caught up in. So if you're ready to come out of those situations, guys, put a plan in place for your finances. Be intentional in your finances. Get a true savings, investing, retirement plan that you can follow. And the beauty Rosie of the said bye, y'all. She waving at y'all. She said thank y'all. Adios, Rosie. Okay.
Okay. Rosie, shut the door. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I miss my office. Can we? Can we go back? When am I? You know what? The things we do for our children out here driving 40 minutes to a school got me out here doing the morning show in the car. Carry on then. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, we got to do what we got to do when it comes to the babies because educating them is of utmost importance. Ed educating mm -hmm. them, yes, on the book side and educating them on the finances, if I can throw that in there too. Guys, That's greatest right. financial geniuses. Yeah, I said it. It's a silly little plug for the book. Yes, I wrote it. Raise a financial genius. You can go check that out. Uh, bit.ly slash books by Lynn. But yes, y'all, make sure that you do things that are going to get you results. All right, y'all. I'm Lynn Simmons, America's number one financial rebound coach. Yes, I said it, America's number one. I want to invite you guys who are ready to go to your next, who are committed to going to your next, and um, you're ready to get into class so you can learn how to invest. Go to bit.ly slash investing blueprint. We had an amazing night in class last night. We have a couple more weeks of class left. It's not too late to get in and get all the resources and the bonuses that are provided, guys. So thank you so much for joining. All right, over to you, Ms. Co-host. All right, thank you guys so much for being patient as you know, I'll probably be doing the show from the car uh, since I do drive a good 38 minutes, not that I'm counting, but a good 38 <laughs> minutes <laughs> to the new school to drop Rosie off. So um, thank you for your patience and thank you everybody that joined the, the show this morning. Oh, she got three in high school. Girl, let me, amen, everybody. <laughs> You're going to need some help, girl. Right. And Kim, thank you. I can't imagine Rosie driving to school. And she is already talking about, you know, I'm 14. I, get, I can get a permit. Uh, no, you can. You, I'm trying to can, but I cannot, as that woman says. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So the field of stop for today. Yesterday we talked about um, you let you got to heal because you keep you know holding on, and that was part of Lynn's quote is you know you're holding on to one thing and you're passing it on to something else, and you've got to heal. We try to rush the process when you don't need to rush your process of getting out of crazy. And for me, it was years, and you got to be gentle with yourself. You can't be, because you've been through so much, being mad at yourself is not going to help the process. You've got to be gentle with yourself. So today on this um, Fearless Friday, Lynn, it is Fearless Friday. <laughs> I like that. Lynn. It's Fearless Friday. And as, as I was reading my friend's book, yeah, I went to um, the Renew You conference. When I tell y'all, I know I keep saying I'm going to tell y'all about it, but it was all for me. And I was reading her book and then on the way home, a thought hit me that reminded me of something. The only thing, and I had to write it down, the only thing limiting us from exceptionalism is how we see God. Mm. The only thing limiting us from being exceptional is how we see God. Because now think of, let's break this down. When you think about God, creator of the entire universe and all things that we see and do is exceptional. And if we are created in his image, the only thing that's different from us being exceptional is that we limit God in our lives and the things that we can do. What? Somebody better say A to the man. I'm just no. saying, we are so far beyond exceptional, so far beyond brilliant, beautiful. I mean, everything but how and when you stop and Lynn, that helped me in my finances because y'all know i'm work, walking out this fearless thing in my finances too and i wish rachel was on rachel told me something about my finances yesterday that that tore me up yes charlene a, a to the men <laughs> i done said that too much if y'all now can repeat that <laughs> but if if God is everything and he's the foundation of the entire world and we can't even describe him and we are made in his image and his likeness, why are we settling? Because now you as a Christian, as a person of faith, or however you find Jesus to be, 
Right. You can't tell me you believe in him and you live in lack. They cannot go together. They just can't. I can't say I love Jesus, walk in faith, and I live in lack in my finances. I can't say I love Jesus, live in lack, and my life is crazy. I can't say I love Jesus, live in lack, and um, got chaos all around me. Because if I knew him and knew that I am to be exceptional, and sometimes we block God. I did not mean for all this to go this way this morning. Sometimes we block God from actually working and being exceptional in our life because we are afraid that he can't do what he said he was going to do. So now mm -hmm. you're limiting the creator of the whole world because you don't, you don't think uh, he can do his job. I don't think he needed our help when he created the heaven and the earth in them little days. You know, he took a rest on the seventh day. He did not need our help. So now we trying to tell him, yes, you created everything that we know, but you know, you can't take care of me, little old Jojo. You can't do that because you don't know my situation. Right. So today on this fearless <laughs> Friday, the only thing limiting you from being exceptional is how you see God. So you might want to think about when you start to complain, how do you see your relationship with God? How is God really working in your life? And then that alone should change your conversation for the rest of the day. It should change your conversation so that you're signing up for Lynn's investing class. It should change your conversation so that you are reading books and you are encouraging yourself and doing things. You are ready to live past crazy yes. in your life and your finances period. If you take out all the emotionalism, because sometimes I think we get so emotional and we get hyped up and like, oh yeah, I'm going to do it. But when you take all of that away yep. and it's just you, you still got to do the work. Still got to do the work. And if you don't do the work, then you, my friend, might want to question your faith that you do have. Now, please understand, we're not saying, at least I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm saying it's going to be hard. It is. But let me close with this. We got to close out the Phyllis Morning Show because I see the traffic building. Is this my fav one of my favorite stories in the Bible? You know, Joshua had sent the spies into the land and they came back and said, Oh, we can't go over there because there's giants over there. And he was like, We going up. First of all, we going, number one. Number two, I don't care what y'all say because we still going. And here Joshua is, an old man. And he look and he see this giant standing in front of the gate, right? And Joshua, old man, now he old, so there's no limitations on what you can do, regardless of your age, first of all. He walked down there and say, look, and he was bold about it. He said, look, either you for me or against me. Either way, I'm getting past you, dog. We can either fight this out now or we, you can let me go in. I mean, he ain't, that's the street way he said it, you know. <laughs> That's how I'm figuring Josh said it. Because at 80, you know, he, he like, look, dog, I've been here for a minute. Either you're going to let me in or I'm making my way in. He in the in like an OG? Yeah, like an old girl. You know he Old Testament? He an OT. <laughs> Not oh only he walked up to the giant and said, you better let me in. The giant said, man... I'm the captain of the Lord's army. I was just waiting for you. Sometimes what we think is big and overwhelming and things that we can't see so we don't even approach it is really our blessing waiting for us to get down into it. Now, how you see it is up to you. But once Joshua got down there, it was like, look, I'm coming on up in here. He was like, dog, I'm the captain of the Lord's army. I'm waiting on you to come on down here so I can let you in. I'm just saying... What is your giant today that you might need to face? It might be your finances. For me, last year, it was my finances. It was at $7,000 that I spent at the Dollar Tree, the Dollar Menu, the Dollar Store, the Family Dollar Store, all of them family in the dollars in the stores and, and the Dollar Menu. Took all my $7,000. When I tell you once I addressed my giant and realized it wasn't this big scary thing, when I tell you the relief in the release, 
because also what he's told Joshua is take off your feet. You are you're on holy ground. So it could be your blessing in the sky. So today, y'all, please be exceptional in all that you do. And the only thing stopping you from being exceptional is how you see God. How are you seeing that giant that you think is a giant but could be your blessing? So I hope you guys have enjoyed the fearless morning show this morning with me and Lynn and our antics and, and Rosie open up the show. We appreciate you guys. Remember, girl, them one dollar. And I went into the dollar. Let me tell you, practice and keeping four thoughts in your mind. I went into the Dollar Tree by myself. And my rule is now I can't even go to the Dollar Tree by myself because I have no self-control in the Dollar Tree. And I went in there for Drano. And when I tell you I had a buggy full of stuff, and I was like, hold up, wait a minute. Let me put my dollars back in my pocket. And I stood there at the register and emptied my... That lady was like, what are you doing? I said, no, ma'am, you won't be getting $7,000 of my money this year. Uh, here go your dollar oh five for the Drano instead of the eighteen dollars worth of stuff. I, now, true, some of it it was stuff I really needed, but I came for one purpose and one purpose only. So if I needed the other stuff, I'm gonna have to plan a whole nother trip to go. Be mindful. If you're always mindful and you're always thinking, have things in the forefront, it is going to change. It's going to be hard to change your thought process. It's hard to come in, It's like coming off a drug. Because you've been thinking that way for so long. So it's going to take you a minute to get your thought process in order. But it will happen. Good morning, Tiffany. Charlene, I know. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, and we have got to be exceptional in all that we do. And the only reason why we're not is because we are changing how we see God. All right, guys. I, please make sure. one thing? Uh -huh. Yes, I gotta add one thing to that exceptional piece, guys. Just imagine if, if, if that $7,000 from those dollar store spins had been invested in Apple. Did y'all not see the news? Apple was trillion the first company, yes, to hit the one trillion dollar. I mark. had to sign that out. Thank Did you see that? God, <laughs> that I had the foresight to get my baby stock in Apple before this hit. Not saying go out and buy it today at its high point, but there's knowledge and information that you need so you can start recognizing and identify. No, I don't get it right every single time. But we do I will get it right a larger percentage of the time than what we have in the past. Y'all better get on board because, guys, we got to learn how to make our money, keep our money, and grow our money. That's true. Oh, Lord, Charlene said Dollar Tree is the devil. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't I ate to the man, honey. Cause it get, but let me tell you, I, you know, Lynn, I had a few dollars. I bought me some Apple last month. And my alert came across it, say trillion. I said, is that with a T? And I had to sign it out in sign language. Like trillion? Like, really? Let me check my stuff. Excited. But all right, guys. If your friends and family do not have Facebook, we have a whole YouTube channel. We are 130 shows strong. Make sure they go over there and watch it. It is by topic, so they can pick any topic, or you can share any topic that you want uh, on the Fearless Morning Show over there. Um, anything else, then, before we close out? Before the month of August ends, I've got to hit a roller coaster. So it won't be this weekend, Lynn, but before... I am going to look at the calendar as soon as I get to work and text you what day we going to ride the roller coaster. So, all right. I'm just saying okay. National Roller Coaster Day is August 16th. So, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> well, guys, we thank you so much for joining <laughs> us for the show. We know time is your most precious commodity. You can't yes! get these minutes back, but you decided to spend those with us, and we appreciate you for that. Well, Miss Lynn make me spit, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> she make me sick. All right, on the sixteenth. What day is that on, Lynn? Golly, it's actually, it's actually on a Thursday. Well, I know we can, probably can't do it on a Thursday. We'll push it out to a Saturday. That's good. Just let me know which Saturday. That's okay, awesome. I'm gonna y'all y'all if y'all gonna come ride this roller coaster with me, y'all uh get in touch with us and so I can send you on um, the information so somebody can film me riding the roller coaster. Uh, I'm I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I, I'm gonna do it. So 
I'm ready now. No, I can't do it on the 16th, Charlene. No. <laughs> Charlene was like, let's go all the way in. <laughs> right? That's what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. I'm, yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. Oh, geez. All right, guys. I got, I'm sitting here like, I ain't an hour from work. I got to go. You guys right. have, a, have a great day. We'll see you here bright and early Monday morning at 7.15. Have a good one. Be safe Bye. out there, guys. Happy Bye. Friday. Bye.